<laughs> However, I'm in a class two. It's been a bit of an interesting time. Uh, the reason for that is because there hasn't been any work. I have signed up with probably four agencies now and not one of them has been able to give me work over the last couple of weeks. So yeah, it's been um, it's been interesting. But today is even more interesting because I'm driving this class two for a friend of mine. Uh, he works for a local uh, lifting company and I'm basically driving the class two that's got bits of wood on it. And those bits of wood are going to be used for uh, the mobile crane that this company are operating for a customer. Uh, we're going to um, Harwich, which is near Phoenixstowe. Uh, they've got to lift some aircon units, I think, uh, for a company. And the only reason I'm going down there is because they need the extra supports. So these these are like the uh, the mats that go underneath the outriggers on the crane, and that basically just means that the crane is nice and stable when they lift um, whatever it is they're lifting. So. My job today is just to drive these down there. Uh, they'll then crane them off the bed, because uh, it's a flatbed. And then I'll just go and park up whilst they do what they need to do. So I don't really have a particularly long or difficult day today. It's just drive there, drive back, pretty much. So hopefully I'll try and get some footage for you. Um, I've got to be careful, because obviously I'm in I, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going in the port or whether it's just outside the port, but I know it's very close by. So, yeah, we're going to be there in about just over half an hour. So, very early start, it's now just got 8 o'clock, and I've been driving. Well, I left the yard at about, about half six, something like that. So I had to get up about quarter past five. So I'm not used to these early mornings, I'll be honest. <laughs> not this early anyway. But uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll get there and see how things are. But I'll chat to you later on as well about um, future, uh, well, potential jobs in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, yeah, it should be um, should be interesting. Hopefully, anyway. But I'll explain more later on, so let's carry on to uh, Harwich and I'll see you guys in a bit. Well, I'm on site now. Um, blah, blah, blah. It's actually a couple of hours later. Um, it's now 25 past 11. <coughs> I'm actually on. Well, but Har Har Harwich, Harwich. I know. Anyway, I'm on the <coughs> port. Harwich, Harwich port. Yeah, and. Um, Basically got here, <clears throat> wasn't quite sure where I was going, but I parked up, um, transport manager told me where to go, and uh, they come, I think the, the port security or whoever they are, come over, come out and found me in his van, and uh, brought me here, so I knew where I was going. I'd never found it, I mean, 
you have to go through security anyway, so it made sense for me to follow him. So yeah, they started lifting off the old um, aircon units. Uh, I think there was two of them, and they put them in this uh, this garage just here. Um, the guy said to me, apparently they're about 25 years old, so they're quite old. And now trucks just turned up with two new ones on the uh, on the back. They've just lifted the first one and they'll probably lift the second one in about five ten minutes after that i don't know if that's it and we pack up or whether they've got to do something else i don't know like i say i'm, I'm just sitting here now there's nothing really for me to do all i'm here to do today is just to drive this and then drive it back again so very easy day i mean i've literally got nothing to do now <laughs> I suppose I could have gone for a wander, but because I'm on site on the port, I don't really want to be wandering around aimlessly, especially with a camera. <laughs> Look a bit dodgy, wouldn't it? But what I will try and do is when they load the the mats back on this, I'll try and attach the GoPro so that you can see um, the crane and all that sort of stuff. I don't know how well it will turn out or whether I'll be able to do it, but... So, yeah... Job wise, this is just a, a one off day. So I said I'd help my mate out and uh, drive this for him today because they, they needed a driver. Um, so done that. And then tomorrow, which is Wednesday, I have, I suppose you could call it an interview, but it, it sort of is and it sort of isn't, um, for a class one job. That's basically a tipper job with a local company to me, and they are they are literally up the road from me, which is ideal. Um, I'm not gonna say who the company is, like always, unless they're happy for me to uh, to talk about them. Uh, I will I will ask them about the recording and stuff if I go and see them, if I feel it's, you know, it's going all right. But that's a class one job. Um, I, I really don't know much more than that, really. I, I just happen to, um, contact them out of the blue so because yesterday obviously I've been looking for work because I've not had much work recently hence the the lack of videos and I thought well I looked online you know all the job sites and that there was nothing there or nothing that I I could do anyway I mean there's a lot of tramping jobs at the moment but obviously I don't want to do tramping at the minute um, and the other jobs that were on there were either class two jobs, which probably too far to travel. Um, there's a lot of jobs that are just simply too far for me to go. I mean, I don't really want to be driving too far, especially for day work. I mean, if I was tramping, I wouldn't mind traveling an hour and a half because, you know, you break that down over five days, it's probably about half an hour, you know, less than that. But when you when you're working as a day driver and you go you you're travelling to work every single day, you don't want to be doing, you know, like an hour each way because then that's an extra two hours to your day, isn't it? And that's a long time. You you ten hours a week, isn't it? Just travelling to work. And that's before you've even driven at work. And like I say to a lot of people, you know, I don't mind the driving. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a driver. But as far as getting to work, I don't mind, you know, sort of half an hour, 45 minutes. I'd rather it was closer, like we all would, but sometimes it's necessary. But I got offered, a, uh, the agency rang me this morning and they said, oh, we got a job for you at this company. This is really weird. I need to go back to them and tell them what I want to do. But she said to me, she goes, um, we're looking for a driver next week on class two. I'm thinking, oh, hang on a minute, I don't want class two, I want class one. And then she says, we do a week on class two and then we can discuss going to class one with the same company. What? Why would you Why would you start out on class two and then go to class one? I mean, I get it, I'm a new driver, but if I've got the licenses, then why not just put me on class one straight away? So I don't, I don't really get that, and, and also, to get there it takes an hour 
because when I used to work for another company up that way, they are literally the other side of the fence. So it's going to be an hour there, it's going to be an hour back. If I'm doing a 10 hour day, that's 12 hours. I don't really want to be traveling, you know, an hour there and an hour back. Some people might not mind, but I don't, I don't want to travel an hour there and an hour back. Don't get me wrong, the money was all right. I mean, that was 16 pounds an hour for class two, which is pretty good money. But if I can get the job that's literally up the road for me on class one, then I'm gonna go for that one, aren't I? But I don't know. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna turn that down, to be honest. I don't, I don't really, I mean, and also, I mean, that class two, that was multi-drop, so it's basically what I was doing at Fitzmorris when I was driving class two. I'm just traveling a lot further to do it. If I wanted to do that, I might as well just go back to Fitzmorris. So yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't get it myself. I don't know what, where the, you know, the idea came from to put somebody on class two first, even though they've got a class one license and then it wasn't even like guaranteed. She said, I'm sure she said, go on class two for the, for next week and then the week after we can discuss class one. So that doesn't even guarantee I'm going to be going on class one the week after that. Am I going to be stuck on class two for, you know, three or four weeks? I'm not, nah, no. <laughs> I'm talking myself out, out of it already. But I said to her, I said, can, you, can I, like, you know, bear in mind it's only Tuesday I was like, when do you need to know by? She went, we need to know by the end of the day. I was like, because my thinking was, I'll go and have a, you know, the interview with this company, and if, you know, the pay isn't very good, or, you know, the job isn't quite what I wanted, or whatever, then, you know, I've still got my options open, and I can take that job. But, since you need to know today, I think I'm just going to turn it down anyway. So, which to some people might be weird, but there's no point in me booking in for, you know, class two work when I might end up getting the job local to me. And then I'm booked in for a week, have to do that, and then go, yeah, it's just a mess. So, tempted just to say, nope, thank you very much, but no. And then see what happens with this class one job. So... But this company, local to me, um, they they do a lot of um, sugar beet. So mo I think most of their business comes from bulk bulk tippers, um, and they move a lot of sugar beet to the sugar factory at Cantley, which is up the road from me as well. So it's quite local, got those sort of local runs, and it it is a little bit sort of back and forth, but. They do also have curtain sliders and they do occasionally do a night out. So the work could be fairly varied, which is which is good, you know. I don't mind doing a night out every so often, providing it's pre-arranged, you know. So yeah. It's it's on paper it sounds alright so far. As I say, I just I just text a guy out of the blue. I looked on the website for well, I looked on Google for local haulage companies. Because I wasn't having much luck with jobs. So I thought I'll just just contact, you know, cold call a few companies out of the blue, um, and for whatever reason I sent a text to this company because uh, they had their transport manager's mobile number on their website. So I was like, I just text him and say, "Hi, is this um, is this you?" I'm not going to name names at the moment, so let's just say Dave. Is this Dave at this company? Thanks, Adam. And uh, he texts back about five, six hours later and went, yes. Nothing else, just yes. So I text back and I said, uh, have you got a class one job available? Um, if so, you know, if you have, let me know and I'll give you, give you a call and email you my CV and whatnot. And <clears throat> within a couple of minutes, he then rang me and said, hi, it's Dave, Dave. Um, we do have a job open at the moment uh, and he said he, he basically just said that we do um, 
you know, bulk runs. They do sugar beet, obviously, because it's all, all based on the seasons and the crops in it. So they'll do sugar beet for X amount of months. Then they'll do, say, corn or whatever else. So I imagine it's not going to be like clean work, especially in the winter. But I tell you what, in the summer, that's probably going to be quite a nice job because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they'll load you up at a field somewhere and then you whip it over to wherever it needs to go and then rinse to repeat you probably do I don't know five or six loads in a day and then of course you've got the potential to go out on the curtain cider and do deliveries nationwide probably so it could be interesting like I say I haven't done a night out yet so that would be quite nice to do a, a night out somewhere make for a nice little video wouldn't it so you just have to see see how it goes they want me to go, go over tomorrow night at half five which means I'll be dark I don't know if they want me to drive for them they'll like just take me out and make sure I'm you know competent enough or whether it's just basically going to have a chat and then maybe they'll invite me back to do an assessment or whether it's just if they like me to hire me, I don't know. Every haulage company is completely different. Some of them ask you to do like written tests and go through health and safety videos and then do an assessment and then do this and do that. You know, it's just a massive rigmarole. I can't be having that. Lots of paperwork and you know I know I know that obviously there is you know there is paperwork to do but <laughs> When a lot of the sort of the bigger haulage companies put you in a classroom and ask you to do a test and do a health and safety day and or a couple of days or whatever, it's just like why? Why what is the point? You know, every time you get a job somewhere you've got these health and safety videos and it's just they're not pointless, you know, they, they do serve a purpose, but a lot of stuff they talk about, you know, like the manual handling and you know the ways you should exit and enter a truck and it's like I've already done all that on my test <laughs> do you need to show me how many times I need to get in and out of the cab properly <laughs> anyway I'm waffling because I'm a bit bored I'm sat here now and actually the Arctic's just reversing out now so maybe 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 they've just done the second lift so maybe hopefully in the next sort of half hour or so they might be packing down so I shall go find out, finish my coffee, which is nearly gone, and cold, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys on the way back, but actually I'll just show you this quickly, because this is quite a nice view, this is, hopefully you can see that alright, that's uh, Harwich Harbour, if you like. So yeah, I hope you like that view. There's not much uh, traffic on the water at the moment. So, and it's actually really calm as well. I think the tide's gone out too, so. Yeah. But I assume this is one of the berths um, because you can see obviously the gantries where the passengers would um, get on the ships and stuff. And behind me, there's a huge ramp um, that goes on to probably a row row ferry so roll and roll off and uh, so yeah so I'm just sort of parked here at the moment and hopefully about too much longer we'll be heading off so I will find out what's going on and I'll come back to you guys in a bit
that's just done pretty much. We're now finished and uh, heading back to the yard. Job jobs. Now I've got a lovely two hour journey back to the yard, so So yeah, that was the crane we used in front. Um, I hope you actually well I tried to get some footage of them loading the mats back on uh, the truck. And my sat nav's just fallen off. Thank you for that. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully you got to see a little bit of footage of the uh, of the crane and whatnot. Like I said, I had to be a bit careful because I didn't want to, you know, push the wrong buttons or annoy anybody and recall when I shouldn't. So, uh, one of the lads said he'd uh, the guy our contact on site. He said um, he's going to. Check me out on Facebook. Uh, not Facebook, um, YouTube. So yeah, I can't complain too much. I'm sort of my sat now actually because that's a bit of a problem. There we go. Right, so that's when you go straight over. from the guys, um, the people behind me, they must have thought I wasn't know where I was Take going. Third because, exit uh, I had to stop for a second and start up with that now, otherwise I wouldn't know where I was going, so they were right. But yeah, that, uh, Take second exit and roundabout. that job wasn't too bad at all, to be fair. Well, definitely not for me anyway, but as far as the job is concerned, that was quite a straightforward lift. Um, so hopefully, uh, well, I'll say hopefully, we definitely had a pretty easy lift and back to the yard nice and early, to be fair. truck is uh, semi-automatic, it's, uh, it's actually, a, I even told you what truck it is, that's a Scania, uh, and as I say it's a semi-automatic so it's got a clutch, and it's the same setup as the one that I had 
when I train in class two. And I still don't like it. After all the experience I've had, I still don't like it. So it's just it's just pointless. Why do you need a clutch? Because what this truck does is it doesn't rev until you release the clutch fully, which means well, firstly it means you don't burn the clutch, but also you have to physically sort of like pull away a little bit, then put your foot down, which means for the first few seconds of pulling away, you don't go anywhere. So it's not ideal. And I think this is an 07, 2007 truck, so it's not particularly new either. condition. I mean the bed is kind of non-existent. You might have seen it in the, the shop before but the bed is just blah. Anyway I'm gonna make myself, well, I'm not gonna make myself anything because I can't drive it but I'm gonna make my way back to the yard and hopefully we'll talk to you guys in a little while because if I get back early enough, which I think I will, I might give the company a ring that I'm having an interview with tomorrow, and I might see if I can go tonight. Might as well kill two birds with one stone. Anyway, I'll chat to you guys in a bit.